Yeah, so just just trying to lay it all out here, right? Talking about the FBI. Talking about the FBI has always been a vicious gangster mafia. Talking about how J. Edgar Hoover, since the 30s, right, he would blackmail politicians. He would work with the mafia, right? He was one of the most despicable human beings on earth. And that is the godfather. That is the, the founding father, essentially, yeah. of the FBI. So the FBI, they say, oh, it's just gotten corrupt lately. You know, No, it's always been corrupt. It's always yeah. been terrible. They've always abused their counterintelligence um, responsibilities to just go after people they don't like politically since forever. So mm -hmm. um, yep. they have no legitimacy and they need to be gone. And that's kind of the case we're building on that page there. Uh, Black Ops 101, that's one of the things most people like, uh, like the, one of the things that I'm most known for is just talking about that situation with the intelligence services and with the crown and kind of where that all came from and mm -hmm. where their use of outsourcing their intelligence uh, operations to criminal proxies goes all the way back to the pirates of the Caribbean, like in the, in the wow. 15, 1600s. So MI6 started as Marine Intelligence Unit 6, um, and it was where they would, they legalized a thing called privateering, which was piracy. And so Span Spain is over here in the Americas doing their thing, getting all the gold. England wants their peace, but they're not bad enough to mess with Spain. So they took flag ships flagged not by any country. So it just seems like this is a bunch of individuals doing this and not a country. And they would go attack those Spanish treasure ships and wow. loot them. And that was kind of the origin of MI6 in the first place. And when there weren't Spanish treasure ships to attack, they created these pirate colonies in the Americas that got by on selling uh, humans, slaves, and prostitutes, and heroin, like opium. So wow. this uh, human trafficking and drug dealing intertwinement with the intelligence services goes all the way back to the days of the Pirates of the Caribbean. And that's kind of the, the case I'm laying out there in that Black Ops 101 page. And it's still plaguing us to this day, right? A lot of people, they don't, they don't correlate the two. But if you notice, as Bush's two wars escalated to Obama's seven wars, the opioid ed epidemic in the United States absolutely exploded. Mm -hmm. And those are independent things. Those are directly contingent upon each other, right? So that's what makes me popular with a lot of black people. Like, hey, wasn't the CIA uh, do doing this uh, drug dealing racket in the inner cities, yeah, right? And, and you guys cocaine. are all crazy conspiracy theorists for that. And now we're saying that, and now you guys are calling us conspiracy theorists. So, hey, hasn't this been your thing for a long time? Yeah. Um, so it makes it people like that section. I talk about um, Libya, Syria, Ukraine. These are just a few examples of many, but they're ones that we have all kinds of documentation for. Um, like in Libya, they were openly giving weapons. And if you click on the links there, you can see in the classified CIA briefing, they were saying, oh, these people that are fighting Gaddafi that were arming were the same people who we were fighting against in Iraq. And they're like, yep, but the media has no way to prove it. So whatever, who cares? Uh, uh -huh. We show how uh, that Benghazi situation, right? And it's behind the Benghazi picture. It's a little uh, hidden Easter egg in there. Talking about how they gave these uh, sophisticated shoulder fire heat seeking missiles that you could shoot planes and helicopters out of the sky. They gave thousands of them to these terror proxies that they wanted to fight Gaddafi. Uh, including Al-Qaeda. And Al-Qaeda went and gave those around to terrorist groups all over Africa. So uh, if you remember that bring back our girls, hashtag bring back our girls, right? Where those girls got kidnapped by those terrorists mm -hmm. and it was this big you know, social media campaign. Those terrorists got their weapons from Al-Qaeda who got their weapons from the State Department. So uh, wow. that's why they didn't want to go save Ambassador Stevens is because if they would have gotten there, if they would have gone and done anything then they would have to acknowledge that this guy's here tracking down all these weapons that we gave to a bunch of terrorists right uh, that was the ridiculous part about it um Whoa. italy the base in italy they could have scrambled air support for those guys it would have been 45 minutes away in a fighter jet right if you scramble and they left mm -hmm. him there all night because they didn't want to acknowledge it so that's in there um Whoa. how they were arming these other groups like the bring back our girls groups is in there um, I mm -hmm. talk about how we turned the most prosperous country in Africa into this backwards hellhole that now has these open air slave markets. Yeah, where mm -hmm. you could go buy a human being in Libya right now, like a person, not just for their time, but for their life. You can go buy a person for two to three hundred dollars in Libya, and that Courtesy never existed before. Of, yeah, well, it it wasn't happening under Gaddafi. Gaddafi was wow. nowhere near the person that they're saying he was. In fact, 
when this was all going down, Gaddafi was trying to negotiate and essentially saying, I'll do whatever you want. I'll make whatever concessions you want. And they just ignored that and said, no, kill him anyways. We want to do this. Uh, Italian yeah. intelligence in there, I shall. Uh, was warning, dude, hey, stop messing with Libya because if you do, we're going to have this massive refugee crisis in Europe. And they ignored that too. Uh, so just like kind of the look behind the curtain at some of this war stuff, talking about in Syria, um, how they said, oh, we're going to go arm these moderate rebels. And it's like, oh, well, so if Antifa was, you know, shooting planes out of the sky and blowing up police cars with missiles, would we call them moderate rebels? Like, get out of here. Yeah. Um, so Syria, Syria is one of the freest countries in the Middle East. They call it Bashar al-Assad, such a terrible dictator. Oh, my God. But guess what? Syria is one of the only places where women could go outside without head coverings. Syria is one of the only places where people could smoke. Syria is one of the only places that people could go dance at nightclubs or drink alcohol, right? Syria is one of the freest countries in the Middle East if you actually look at, you know, the comparisons there. Yeah. And under that pretext of, well, we got to get rid of this horrible dictator, uh, they went and armed a gigantic terrorist army that stormed across uh, Syria Syria is got all kinds of ancient artifacts and historical sites, right? And these terrorists would just go blow all them up, right? Yeah. Temples in Palmyra, like Roman temples that had stood there for 2,000 years, survived everything in 2,000 years, all the wars, all the changes of hands. Those terrorists just went and blew them up, right? Sadistic stuff. And mm -hmm. uh, they were burning people alive. They were cutting people's heads off. And so if you look at that page, it is a little graphic, but the idea there is I'm trying not to sugarcoat this for you. I'm trying to show you, like, I hope you are disturbed by this page. I hope this makes you sick to your stomach. I hope that this makes you realize that this government is evil. Like, this is not hyperbole. This government is evil. And they are taking our money and wasting it. They are flooding our country in drugs. They are going and stirring up all the problems that they claim to be trying to fight around the world. Mm -hmm. And then get this. When those terrorists weren't winning fast enough, what do they do? They went and they took chemical weapons. They got the Saudis, KSA of Saudis, to do these staged chemical weapons attacks and, and essentially try to manufacture Arkansas to go to a full war there, right? Mm -hmm. So just preposterous on every level. And so I show, hey, here's the situations. And then later on, I put some videos on there of the in-depth analysis from both the UN's weapons inspectors and some, from some other independent journalists of like how these chemical weapons attacks, there's zero chance that they happen how they said they did. And mm -hmm. all of the evidence points to this was uh, something coordinated by the uh, United States coalition of Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and Turkey. Well, well, insane. And they basically reduce, you know, reduce that country to rubble to at one point, right? Now they're, yes, they're, they're making a bit troops. of a comeback or there's troops. And this is one of my bones to pick with Trump too. It's like, dude, you said no. They said yes, and then you just mm. kind of caved, right? So we there's American boots on the ground to this day in Syria, and there's American troops in Syria occupying the oil-rich areas and essentially looting their oil right now, to this wow. day. Um, and and we are we have all these crazy sanctions on Syria, right? And who does that affect? When we sanction food, when we sanction all this stuff, is that getting Bashar al-Assad? Is that getting any of the oligarchs in Syria? No, that's just starving a bunch of poor people, right? Yeah, that yeah. Their just country like is already Iraq. destroyed. Yeah, yeah it's, just like it's in crazy. Iraq in the 90s, yeah. Yep, and, and it's yeah. like, so, so you guys went and killed in Iraq, for example, a million civilians, one million civilians killed by the United States, and you guys are talking about how these terrorists are so bad, mm -hmm. right? Like, how how... It's it's not even close. The carnage caused by the deep, the American deep state and our British allies does not even compare whatsoever to the carnage caused by these terrorists that we stood up in the first place. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I talked about with the Ukraine situation. This is another thing where, you know, Trump is at his frozen steering wheel over there, right? So Ukraine's popping off. They, they staged this stunt. Right, they went to this place called Maidan. The CIA was uh, provoking all these protests, and then they got some of those neo-Nazi guys to shoot rifles down at the crowd, and they killed like hundred people. And then the media all blamed it on the Russian aligned president at the time, even though that was totally BS. So he gets mm -hmm. ousted. We install our puppet, and this this whole thing gets off to the races in 2014. Right, people in the Donbass, like in the eastern part of Ukraine, that Russia wants to take right now, they've been getting cluster bombed since 2014. Right. There's been wow. tens of thousands of people and 
uh, cities reduced rubble since 2014. This war didn't start in 2022. It started in 2014. And uh, so it was all start, started by this sadistic stunt that they did. Then when the United States population and the president, Obama at the time, was reluctant to go to war, the CIA, right? Remember that flight MH17? Yeah. Uh, gets shot down over eastern Ukraine. So this is a passenger airline full of women and children and civilians. And the CIA tricks the uh, Russia-aligned rebels into shooting that plane down by really? uh, feeding a bunch of misinformation in there that that's one of those fighter jets that was coming to bomb them, right? At the time, they had tons of fighter jets coming to bomb them. So they tricked them into shooting that down as if that was a fighter jet on purpose mm-hmm. so that there would be mass carnage and so that wow. the people in the United States would be down to go to war with Russia. This is the kind of stuff they do. And this is why we need to completely get rid of this system. Um, with With Trump... Kind of where I was going earlier with that was Hunter Biden, right? He calls this out with Hunter Biden, right? Like this thing with Hunter Biden is absolutely preposterous. It stinks to the high heaven. You need to investigate or I'm not giving you your weapons. Mm-hmm. Then he has this impeachment charade. And I think a big part of the reason um, that he had this impeachment charade was because uh, the Bidens and a lot of the politicians that we have, they go over to these foreign countries and they have these diplomatic visas. Right. So mm-hmm. that diplomatic visa means that none of the laws of that country apply to you. Right. You have diplomatic immunity. It doesn't matter what you do. Mm-hmm. And so none of them can be prosecuted for any kind of corrupt things they do on that end. The only way they could potentially be prosecuted would be from our side. Since the FBI is so close to the CIA and MI6, if they're like, mm-hmm. hey, stand down over here, which they do all the time, mm-hmm. then they can uh, essentially make it so these politicians can go do these rackets overseas. And get them eyeballs deep in corruption so that we're, we're forced to go to war, even, even when it's super unpopular. Like this Ukraine thing is super unpopular, no matter how much they try to astroturf it in the press. And we, they still send all this money over there anyways, because all yeah. their politicians are eyeballs deep in that. So Trump, by saying, you must investigate this, Mr. Zelensky, now he's pushing on this diplomatic immunity thing. Right now, he's poking this nerve that mm. is the whole the facilitation of all the CIA rockets around the entire world, and so now the whole deep state mobilizes against him, and now they're trying to impeach him, right? Mm-hmm. Which I it was good on him to do that in the first place, definitely push on that nerve, but then he ends up essentially getting cucked into sending the weapons anyways, right? So he gets impe- not only does it not get investigated, mm-hmm. he gets impeached. And then he still gives them the weapons. So that's the kind of thing. It's like, come on, Trump. Come on, buddy. And again, I'm not necessarily saying that anybody in those shoes, anyone else would have done better. But I'm saying, dude, Trump, you want to bang with the big boys. You knew what you were getting into, dude. And if you want to bang with the big boys, you got to bang on our behalf. Otherwise, what good are you? Mm -hmm. Um, Right? So I don't, don't, you know, have any personal animus towards Trump. I just uh, wish he would. Uh, grow a pair and uh, not, you know, I wish you'd have used the power of that Twitter to bang on this stuff. Instead of fighting with like Joy Behar and Don Lemon and all these idiots on Twitter, why aren't you fighting with the deep state on Twitter, buddy? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And and so that was that was one of my bones to pick. Again, I was a huge Trump supporter. Right? I was supported in both elections, but you know, we can't just blindly follow people, right? We gotta call balls and strikes here and criticize them when mm-hmm. they're wrong and don't do that when they are. Uh, but back to this Ukraine thing, after we were giving them all those weapons, after we were arming all those neo-Nazis, which everybody in the uh, alternative liberal press knew were neo-Nazis and was calling that out until Joe Biden got elected. Um, in 2019, uh, and this is on the site, the military crafted the strategy for how to overextend, unbalance, essentially screw with Russia in every way possible, right? Mm-hmm. And there was uh, political things like causing protests, uh, raising doubt about their elections, um, causing strikes, you know, doing all this rabble rousing politically, domestically for them. There was these intelligence things of where, okay, in order to mess with Russia, because Russia is supporting Assad and Syria, we're going to arm these terrorists even more. We're going to arm these Ukrainian people even more. We're just going to go like cause even more of a ruckus around the world just to poke Russia in the eye. Then there was the uh, like, weapons development wing of that, which was we're going to go spend a crap load of money that we don't have building Mm -hmm. these new weapons, building tons of these new weapons and positioning these weapons all around Russia, including nukes. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then, and this is one of the things that never gets shown on the news. 
the fact that NATO since the 90s has creeped all the way up to Russia's border. And it's not just the fact that they're NATO. It's the fact that we go over there and our military holds these massive, massive military drills. Google or go on YouTube. Anybody who doesn't believe me, go on YouTube and look at this up. We have these massive military drills with Estonia, with uh, Norway, with Finland, with um, all the P all the mid NATO members on Russia's border. And these drills are essentially tens of thousands of our troops firing weapons and all this stuff and simulating an attack on Russia right on their border. Wow. Right? Wow. So, so this just intentional antagonism um, is what we were doing, ramping that up extra hard in 2019. And ironically enough, in the report and in their emails, they, they say, hey, do this stuff. But do it at your own risk because this is a very belligerent strategy. And if you don't do this carefully, this will definitely provoke a war with Russia. And so wow. what do they do? They do it very ham-handedly. And sure enough, it provokes a war with Russia. And then we act like, oh, Russia is so evil for uh, mm -hmm. you know defending their interests. right? How, how is uh, what Russia wants to do with Ukraine any different from what France does with North, North Africa? Right? Yeah. France owns most of North Africa. All like 15 of the biggest North African countries are legally required to hold their gold reserves that back their currency in the French central bank. They are legally wow. required to do business with French companies. And if they don't, and if anybody elects doesn't gets elected who does it, the French sends the foreign legion to go kill them or to go put that down by force. And I know this like a Guys who used to work for the Foreign Legion worked for me, and they would have all these kind of crazy stories about how, yeah, the, you know, we had this bunch of kids we had to kill this one time, and it was just horrible, and I have, like, really bad nightmares about it, and whatever, whatever. Uh, the UK, they still own, like, Jamaica, for example. The commander-in-chief and the formal head of state of Jamaica, go Google, me, go Google this if you guys don't believe me, is the king of England, what is going on, right? So how is Russia wanting to have this, uh, exert this influence on a country right next door to it? How is that worse than what Britain does all around the world, what France does in North Africa, what a lot of these guys do, right? So, so Russia's like, dude, this isn't our interest. Uh, Ukraine, for most of its history, was a part of Russia, right? Mm -hmm. It used to be called Kievan Rus. When Russia was started, mm -hmm. it was called Kievan Rus, and Kiev was part of Russia. Uh, so it's just completely preposterous. And the worst part, the absolute worst part about this whole thing is that Vladimir Putin knew exactly what we we're going to do. You know why? Because he had all of Hillary Clinton's emails, aka the person who oversees the State Department and has all of the CIA dirty doings in her emails. He has their entire playbook. And so does anybody with eyes, right? So they could pretend to us like that doesn't exist. But all of our enemies have our entire playbook. And that's why from a foreign policy standpoint, we just get clowned on nonstop. It's because everybody knows mm -hmm. exactly what we're going to do. And these dumb dinosaurs that run our country, they just never stop doing the same thing, right? So even if you don't think they're evil at all, like at very least, you should acknowledge, like we definitely need a new playbook here because everybody mm -hmm. is completely clowning on us, right? Russia yeah. stored up a bunch of precious metals, right? To keep their currency strong through this. Russia had back channels to all these other countries uh, that when the United States was trying to pull this BS, a lot of countries are saying, you know what? Screw those United States sanctions. Screw the United States rules. Screw SWIFT, which is the money transfer system that the United States uses to try to chop people off when they don't like them. Mm -hmm. Screw all this. We're just going to go join this trade block with Russia and China called BRICS, right? Mm -hmm. uh, even Germany, Italy, like a bunch of European countries are starting to move this direction too. So, so it's not just evil we're doing in Ukraine. It's not just ridiculous. It's completely, it's like, such a case study in self-sabotage, right? Nothing has done mm -hmm, more to mm -hmm. diminish the the American power around the world than this retarded nonsense in Ukraine, right? A lot of our trading partners are moving away from us into bed with China and Russia. Yeah. Saudi Arabia is now selling uh, China, the world's biggest buyer of oil. They're selling that in want, right? So for people who don't know, we have this thing called the petrodollar. And if you think about our dollar, it's based on nothing kind of like cryptocurrency, right? So the more people that use it, the more valuable it gets. It's very arbitrary. And mm -hmm. so back in the day, we did this thing where we shook everyone down and we're saying, hey, all of your oil, all of your international trade, you have to do it in dollars, right? So to artificially hold up the value of our money. Well, now with this Ukraine situation, a lot of these guys are saying, screw this, we're getting away from the dollar and we're doing our own mm -hmm. thing now. So financially, militarily, diplomatically, 
This situation in Ukraine is objectively a disaster for the United States, to anybody with eyes and anybody with a brain. And it's uh, nothing is accelerating the demise of our country faster than this singular thing that happening in Ukraine. Yeah, that all that all our corrupt politicians are cheering on and proudly supporting. It's 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 insane. Yep. Well, um, Austin, did we uh, not touch upon anything that we should touch upon, or did we cover most of the website? I think I think we covered most of the website. Um, I also have in there a resources section, uh, mm. just real quick. Um, so one of them is WikiLeaks. Obviously, WikiLeaks is a big resource, and I try to show people, like, just have it be a quick, simple thing about all the insane stuff in WikiLeaks. A lot of people think, oh, that's just Hillary's emails, or it's just George Bush stuff. But they dog out people from all over the world. Right as they were getting called Russian agents by the American government, they dogged out FSB, like the Russian intelligence services. They leaked a bunch of their stuff and dogged them out in a huge way too. Mm -hmm. The Turks, the Saudis, everybody gets dogged out by WikiLeaks. Great source of information. Uh, I show some other sources, just kind of like some other big document dumps there. Mm -hmm. um, one of which is the Panama Papers, uh, which, which helped the people in Iceland enact a regime change in their country back in 2011, a uh, grassroots kind of hacker and activist-led regime change in their country. Check that out if you guys wow. haven't seen that. That's uh, awesome. We have, so we have those informational resources. Then we have a bunch of really cool uh, open source intelligence tools. So things for anonymity, uh, like, like when the social media is censoring you and you want to get around that, there's tools to get around that in there. Uh, oh, there's on the tools website to too, bypass, that's awesome. There's tools yeah. to bypass paywalls. There's a bunch of like data, like raw data resources in there. If you are part of the movement, if, you, if you're mm -hmm. trying to help us change this country, there is a bunch of free photo editing tools. Like, so there's a free, like pretty much full version of Photoshop that's web-based and you don't have to pay for it in there. That works really well. Oh, wow. There's one of those magic erasers where if you want to erase something out of a picture, but you don't want to erase the actual picture behind it, the AI can deduce what's there. There's one of those uh, upscalers. So you know how in like CSI when they're, they get a really grainy image and they're like enhance and it like grows yeah. and it like, so we have one of those in there. Yeah. Uh, but it's essentially just a bunch of, uh, a great collection of free tools that we think that everybody should be uh, using. And uh, there's photo analysis tools in there. So in real time, as the Ukrainian government was putting out these BS pictures, we're using some of these photo analysis tools that we have on our website, people on the internet were able to say, look, this is Photoshopped clearly. Right? Mm, it's, there's clear wow. signs of it when you, when you look at it under the right light and we have the tools in there to do that. So there's video editing tools, right? If you want to make content, you don't have a green screen studio. There's a thing that can just, you could sit anywhere and it can cut you out with AI. This uh, is all on the QIntel Pro site. Yeah, that's that's on, really it's on the wow. OS intelligence tools. So mm -hmm. we got that and we got a bunch of other fun stuff. I call it uh, the hacking tools section, and I have to disclaim because mm -hmm. I've uh, you know been to prison already that this is for educational purposes only. But essentially, <laughs> there's a company called Kali that they make this version of Linux that mm -hmm. is a collection of all the baddest uh, fun toys and gadgets from across the internet: Wi-Fi sniffers, password attack, just anything you can think of. Right, hundreds of these things for every category, and they mm -hmm. built it all into this really snazzy little operating system that you can install it on a USB drive and put it into any computer and boot to that USB drive. So you could use okay. this thing using the resources of that computer. And then when you get up and you walk away, you pull the USB drive out and there's no trace of you ever being at that computer. So again, wow. for educational purposes only, I need to mm -hmm. specify, uh, but check it out. It's some cool stuff. Um, it's it's uh, some fun toys. So it's, That's we're awesome. trying, you know, we, we've been a part of the movement for a long time. We're doing this thing called the quantum movement, essentially a regime mm -hmm. change operation in the United States. And um, this, this website is our attempt to be like, have a more mainstream posture to show people that like, look, we're not just a bunch of tinfoil hat lunatics from the internet. We're actually like coming at you with some pretty hardcore facts there. Mm -hmm. And we use a bunch of fun tools and techniques to get that done. So uh, wow. check it out if you haven't had a chance. Qintel.pro and uh, follow us on social media. And uh, we're going to be doing a lot more great content over the next year or so, trying to ramp this thing up, trying to pull it Andrew Yang with our uh, universal passive income with the Internet Bill of Rights and get a bunch of uh, people who normally wouldn't be very uh, amenable to our position on board. Mm -hmm. And uh, working with awesome guys like these guys over here, 
at America Happens, right? I have that right. These yep, guys are awesome. Right, yep. the, whole, the whole crew. So my little crew in Arizona uh, that worked on the Drone Davison campaign and that works on the quantum movement here, we had a chance to get up there and um, hang out with some of these guys from this Vegas crew. And these are some awesome guys. Um, you know, support what they're doing, follow their stuff. They're a bunch of really awesome people. Them here probably knows more about this trust law and U.S. corporation stuff than I do. This this is one smart cookie right here. So anybody who hasn't, uh, you know, tuned into this show regularly, check him out. Uh, yeah. But yeah, yeah that, so that's I... How, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, I'm just saying that's how we connected is like trying to figure out how to get us uh, out of this mess, you know? And the peace flag too. I mean, that's a big state national concept right there, you know? Yeah, we're, we're trying to turn this into the symbol of the revolution here. Like... Whatever, whatever direction you're coming at this from, if you think this country is irredeemably corrupt, throw up this throw up this flag here, and that's how you're going to let us know. Um, awesome. But I want to say real quick before I go, I encourage everyone, after see seeing this group, right, we have our group in Arizona, they have that group in Vegas, get together with like-minded people from where you're at, do shows, support candidates, like, make it happen. And even if it's, like, five to ten of you, like... Mm -hmm. These guys in Vegas show just how awesome that model is and how, you know, you get you get a group of like-minded people and we could take over each individual market in the United States, starting with Vegas and Arizona and branching out from there. And that that's how we make this happen. Decentralized groups of patriots and truth seekers moving and shaking, making stuff happen. Um, so that huge fan. You guys, yeah, you guys like, have likewise. subscribed to America Happens. Check them Thank out. You, support yeah. them. They're awesome. Thank you. Thank you. And you you guys, what you guys are doing out there is amazing, too. It's just great to have, like, patriots that actually care about the future of this country. And just like you said, like-minded people, we got to, you know, stick together. And it's it's all about getting this information out, you know? I think we as many podcasts as there are out there, I mean, we're combating a huge mainstream media apparatus. We need all of us out there pitching in and trying to get this information out. Absolutely. And I encourage everyone to try to uh, mix it up with people who we don't normally uh, get along with, right? If we want to get to this 75% figure, mm -hmm. we got to go collect all of the groups who have bones picked with the government for whatever reason that is, right? And yeah. so we, it's just got to be, you know, we don't have to agree on everything, but it's just on this one thing, bankruptcy, constitutional convention, we need 75% of the people. So get out there and chop it up with people that you don't normally agree with. And I bet, no. I bet you'd be surprised how many of them also agree that this government, it needs to go. And honestly, what you're doing, finding common ground, because a lot of us, you know, we're in this kind of like right leaning world. And I think what you're doing is fantastic because like you broke it down with the FBI there. I mean, we have so many, so many things in common with Democrats, you know, and I think it's a matter of, we got to bring all that together. And, you know, all of us have not liked the FBI for a very long time. And I think uh, we got to find those common grounds and start cleaning the system out. And and we just got to talk to them and say, look, this has always been your thing. I came to your side on that issue and you ran away. Mm -hmm. What's up, right? Just because you no. got so triggered by Trump, now you're on Team FBI. Is that really yeah. a... Is that really that's a psychological operation. That's a psychological... Big they're, they're so They're so fearful that... Those people are going to wake up and be like, you know what? Trump's my best option because he wants to go in there with a wrecking ball. And I need that wrecking ball because there's a lot of government institutions that are so corrupted that they need to be wrecked. Uh, that's their fear. That's their fear. That's why they keep trying to divide us. That's why they brought up the race stuff. That's why they dig up all this nonsense that was like fading away just to kind of, you know, get rid of that guy. Because he is one of the biggest threats. He's the only guy that's talking about shutting down these, you know, corrupt institutions. So, you know, nobody else is saying it. Yep. So hopefully um, we can be either pushing him to be a little bit more aggressive and giving him the air support that he needs to, and the public uh, opinion that he needs to do that. Or we can have some other people get in the game who also want to wreck stuff. And there could be a competition for who can who can make this uh, who can slay this deep state the best. No. Yep. Right. But I but I think this, uh, you know, it's tough with our elections here. Right. You saw in Arizona how that goes. Yeah. Right. And yeah. So it's it's very tough with our current election system. That's why uh, we're pushing for this uh, blockchain election insurrection. Wink, wink. Um, mm -hmm. And again, for all the uh, FBI agents listening, I'm specifying that this is a uh, exercise in democracy, not an actual insurrection. It's just a joke. 
<laughs> but I think if we could bypass that and we could show everybody like just how many people in this country are down for that, that would be, that is the first step building the mandate there. And then we can actually have a new country. We can, we can have a, we can make America quantum. And that's, that's mm-hmm. one of the vernaculars we like to use, especially with our left wing friends is a lot of them have been tricked into thinking that make America great again was about taking America back to a certain point in time when really it's about charging America into the future and uh, modernize leveling us up in a way that we've never been leveled up before.